that gives you an idea of the welding on those plates that secures those plates to the reactor cow panel plus the plug weld connection joints which would be here 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 and here remember these areas that were full of corrosion now nice and non-corroded all treated under these layers so these were brackets that we took off blasted and then re-welded Here's the start of another E46 M3 rear axle carrier panel repair and reinforcement process at Reedish Motorsport in Bristol. This is a 2006 coupe manual um, and it's not just a registered 2006, it's actually field date. It's field date May 2006, so it must be one of the last production cars, um, coupe wise I mean, for the E46. It's only 51,000 miles extremely low nowadays in 2018 so it's a very good example very low mileage very late one um, and it's in because it's eventually going to be used for a little bit of track work so it's coming in for you might argue preventative work however there already has been um, clot welds and cracks noticed by the customer not necessarily underneath the car but inside the car nowadays more and more people are watching our videos about how to inspect the inside of the cavities with borescope cameras and uh, and there are front mounts which are the front pair of subframe mounts still at the rear subframe but where they go into their cavities under the rear seat panel there's two or possibly three compromised mig welds on this car we'll show you that later in the video um, we'll be obviously taking the car apart and degreasing the entire panel having a look around see if we can find any hairline cracks or spot welds that are broken after october 2004 they got some additional plastic bracing inside the cavity, plus additional couple of three spot welds and one extra mig weld over there, plus an extra two spot welds directly above us where it connects the rear axle carrier panel to the chassis legs inside the car. So that normally helps the left rear. However, we normally still find on the late cars that the front mounts have got very small semicircle cracks above the bush once we take the rear axle out. There's a few other things we're going to be doing brake pipes as well because these are pretty crusty no better time whilst we've got the fuel tank out to put some nice new genuine BMW brake pipes front to rear and the over axle one as well uh, we've also noticed some corrosion which is starting to build up so hopefully we'll be able to help the customer with that as well we'll see a little bit more once we get the car stripped out the rear axle is now being removed along with the fuel tank and the filler neck system we're just disconnecting the brake pipes these also need to be changed on this car because they've got serious corrosion on them and the customer's also supplied some new brake pipes so we'll be putting those on um, so that's the first look underneath it's fairly clean actually being an 06 car the sealer is in good condition and a lot of the paneling's in fairly good condition it's had a good amount of um, sorry just waiting for the camera to focus it's had a good amount of sort of waxy grease from the diff and other components coating a lot of the chassis underneath which has protected it fairly well although it is suffering from corrosion on the outer edges these brake pipe brackets the fuel tank strap brackets and where the fuel tank's been rubbing up on the chassis or the rear axle carrier panel just there a bit more corrosion on the seat panel than we'd expect on an 06 car um, but I think the customer mentioned it might have lived in Scotland on this car, possibly. Uh, here's the brake pipe corrosion that is poor, and although you could probably clean it up and paint it, absolutely no point whilst you've got great access with the fuel tank down. So we'll be doing genuine BMW metal brake pipes front to rear, and shaping them, putting them in the correct positions. The rest of things look quite good. The spring perch is nice. You don't Normally you get a lot of corrosion on there, a little bit on the right hand side. Nasty corrosion on the right hand side of the rear axle carrier panel on those two brackets but we've now got a bracket exchange program for an additional cost. Um, uh, we can aqua blast those brackets, remove them from the chassis, treat the rear axle carrier panel corrosion underneath with a bit more labour and then put them back together. Those are all additional, apart, um, additional to the actual rear axle carrier panel repair and reinforcement process got a little bit of slight crack around the mounting point shown with the corrosion in a semi-circle sort of position similar on the right hand side with potential for spot weld damage that one is where the bush has been contacting don't know if it's split yet but the corrosion would suggest that there's some movement there check that out a little bit closer once we've degreased it 
We're also needing to degrease the arches. We've got a lot of mud in there and we need to be uh, stitch welding this side of the arch to the wheel to the rear axle carry panel. Even though there's no spot weld breakages showing at the moment, it's still something we do. The later cars after October 04 have got a big plastic barrier system in there which strengthens this corner up quite nicely. So you don't often see the traditional cracks in this fold of this floor or the panel, rear axle carry panel. They've also got two, no, three extra spot welds down there, one extra MIG weld there. They've extra, got an extra spot weld on this line here where the RACPs welded to the chassis legs inside the car and they've got exactly the same spot weld over there. Nothing changed on the right hand side I don't believe. Um, so we're not really expecting to see much issues under here once we once we degrease that but um, we do have some front ones, some very small cracks on the front and we've got some already in the inside cavities under the rear seat panel we know about. Apart from that it's just taking care of the corrosion that the customers asked us to look into as well. We might need to change a couple of chassis studs that are showing poor threaded connections. Um, and the battery tray as well. Battery tray's got the bracket that's not needed on the M3 models, um, which is harboring quite a lot of corrosion in that nasty little area. So we want to take care of that at the customer's request. Um, so next up is degrease. So the part way through the degrease process now into the rear arches and look at the difference. We've obviously got degreaser on that, which makes it dark and look more dirty than it is. But these arches are very good underneath and straightforward cleaning process will bring them up extremely well. Well we've done the degreasing process now on the rear axle carrier panel and out into the wheel arches, um, a bit up into the battery tray and the boot floor area, into the seat panel and a bit over to the trailing arms as well, and the areas that we'll be working on and painting. And it's actually very good, not only the seam sealer on this car but also the areas of bare metal which are classed as eco just on them. These are extremely good, all flat surfaces, very nice, no great corrosion problems coming off there, apart from the edges. So when there's an edge of a panel or an open um, brake pipe bracket or fuel tank strap bracket, then there's corroded areas that are suffering. So it looks like we're going to be dealing with those as well after we spoke to the customer. We've also seen the rear trailing arm pocket seam sealer, quite a long split of seam sealer on there showing the flex of that inboard bolt which means that we'll have to put a stitch weld on there and lots of corrosion on this right hand side these are nasty ones so we'll be taking those off as well so now the corrosion on the RACP where the fuel tank's been rubbing and we've got similar sealer split on that rear trailing arm pocket as well a bit of corrosion up on the spring turret not so much on that side so yeah having a look at the mounts underneath we've got one two spot welds flexing, maybe a third starting, a little bit of a crack going around there. This one we've got another crack going around there, one, two, three spot welds affected, possibly a fourth starting, a little bit of a dent just here where the where the bush is I mean, impacting upwards, possibly a spot weld with a crack, we'll have to check that. Yeah actually it does look like a crack in there as well. And then right rear mount at the moment appears okay and the threads also look good from the chassis studs. And then the left rear mount also looks quite good. We'll do a more thorough check over here, but like I was explaining, these models after October 04 have a big solid plastic block, which is um, ex where's the exact fitment inside this panel. And that really does stiffen things up. So a couple of spot welds showing early signs of movement, but at the moment I don't see any crack problems yet. And I think we're even okay with corrosion down this lip here. We might have this spot weld here starting to blow. Because we've also got some corrosion, odd corrosion on the seal joint here, which is, that's the second extra MIG weld. Normally they all have that one. In October 04 onwards they have that one as well. So looking structurally fairly sound, but we'll just now start with our stop drilling um, and crack repair work on the mounting point. So I've identified the cracks around the front mount points and we've taken a section out so that we remove the crack but also we create a channel where we can connect our weld, penetrate into the threaded receiver inside. Um, drilled out the flex spot welds there and then a similar thing on this side. We're just going to be putting weld through primer into this channel next so that there's never any bare metal. Prepped up the handbrake consoles for the spacer plates here and at the same time we've also taken off the brackets for the fuel tank strap and the 
brake pipe brackets, both sides. This side wasn't too bad, but you see it's still a lot of corrosion there. We need to treat that, but we're just taking them off at this stage, getting ready to do the crack repair welding work. Um, bare metal also the other side, we confirmed there was no crack here, so we're happy to start bare metal in that area. And the same with the right hand side rear as well. Um, we're gonna put them in weld through primer to keep them safe and then get going with welding these repair uh, cracked next. Now crack repair welding is being completed and then flush back uh, nice and flat and original looking shape of the rear axle carrier panel. It's been coated in weld through primer so there's no bare metal and now we're ready to get the reinforcement plates up on and welded in place. And here's the Reedish V2 reinforcement plate kit. This is the rear side. These are all weld through primer painted as well so there's never any bare metal. Here's the battery tray area now. We've removed that bracket that had all the corrosion in it. So remove that. Doesn't seem to have damaged any of the battery tray. And now we're gonna get rid of all this loose flaky corrosion and then treat that before then carrying out the paint work later on. The welding work on the reinforcement plates is finished. This is the Reedish V2 reinforcement plates. They've literally just been welded. So they've still got what we call MIG welding dust, which is that brown dust all around them. That needs buffing off, but it gives you an idea of the welding on those plates that secures those plates to the React cow panel, plus the plug weld connection joints, which would be here, 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 and here, and then three underneath, one here, one here, one here. There's the right front there. These are the spacer plates. Here's the right rear, and here's the left rear. So they look a lot nicer and neater once we buff that up. As in buffed, I mean get rid of the MIG welding dust so you can expose and see the lines nicely. And then we've got rid of three, no four, because they've got more on this one. Four MIG welds, spot welds down this side and replace them for MIG welds, then flatten them off. And then we've stitch welded the rear axle carrier panel to the wheel arch panel there. So there's where the joint looks like it's two separate panels, which it is. And they have one, two factory little stitch welds. And we then do a continuous one because normally the it's identified that the problem starts in this left rear or whether it doesn't start completely but it emanates one of the first areas or second areas is the left rear if not the right front things like that so uh, we're part way through the bracket removal on the corrosion treatment in other locations and then when we've got uh, that treated well then we can get the brackets welded back in position i'm working through all the corrosion removal or treatment on the uh, e46 m3 seeing bare metal in areas where found loose corrosion Still got some there on the underside lip. That's like 1.2, maybe 1.5 mil thick. Um, and underneath the seam sealer is where this corrosion can, can just fester and just start creeping. And here's a perfect example. This is in the right wheel arch, at uh, right rear. This is the uh, tube which the fuel tank breather pipes go through. And what looked very good and hadn't broken through any, uh, any seam sealer, there was no corrosion visible, but I could see that there in the distance there was some in this actual tube where there's no seam sealer, I could see there was some corrosion under here, but I've just put one swipe with the wire wheel tool and look how much is under there and exposed. So we'll take all that off and get rid of that loose stuff and then uh, try and treat it, or well, we will treat it. You can't actually remove it because it's, it's in between metal layers. There's a tube here and then the wheel arch panel just poking through there and the corrosion is there. So unless you're interested in taking the panels out on these cars then there's no way you can actually remove it but you can seriously treat it and keep it at bay and we've got exactly the same thing which is very common nowadays up on the um, turret you might call that um, where the shock absorber top mount sits for the rear you all start seeing little bits of corrosion and pickling but it's not until you actually touch it with like a wire wheel machine like I just said earlier that it, it just blows apart and opens and shows you how much corrosion can be hiding that's unbonding the seam sealer on its own over the last few years I guess this has been going on and um, and also it gets hidden because you've got uh, the top mount which sits on that whole oval plus you've got um, a, a rear plastic wheel arch cover so you don't really get much chance to inspect them and all the dirt normally that would be in here but we've degreased it so there this is a perfect time to get this loose corrosion off um, the good thing is there's no double panel here this is the internal diameter of the punched um, wheel arch 
so you don't there's no secondary panel and I can actually chase this corrosion out until I find an edge it might have to come all the way down here but it won't be stuck between two layers so I can I can get rid of that and then treat that later on with a chemical so that's looking a bit better that's probably three hours worth of wire wheeling not only cleaning up the plates which is quite a quick process because all we're doing is getting welding dust off there but then taking thick seam sealer off and also loose corrosion around the spring perches um, behind the brackets that we've taken off on the rear axle cab panel in the handbrake consoles around the back of them in the seat panels loads of it over there and over there um, we've got it at the back of the or back of the rear axle cab panel where the exhaust studs are um, on the seat panel over there and you can still see that there's there's like a burgundy color rust grain um, Sorry rust color, which is corrosion still stuck in the, the metal grain where it's been pitted so much So that is one of the first stages is knocking off all the loose corrosion. Oh, and that takes it out of the Spring turret uh, the perches up there as well And now we need to go on to the next stage which is treating this with a chemical and we're going to use pore 15 metal prep so we just apply this chemical over the affected areas and then we keep this wet for 30 minutes. So it will try and dry out, so it'll probably need four passes and we'll go down around the whole car like this and keep it wet 30 minutes and then wash it off after. So we carried on going, not much hardship to actually do the reinforcement plates as well, which is why you see they're wet, they've got the chemical on there. Already it's looking very good. We had a huge amount of corrosion on here previously before the brackets were removed. Obviously we've still got some in the grain underneath but it's slowly being neutralised. So doing everything, not only bare metal area, we're not just concentrating on corrosion now, we're doing um, all the reinforcement plates as well. So after 30 minutes of the Pull 15 metal prep um, being on the metal, we've uh, washed that off or dried that off and we haven't yet even dried the panel but <laughs> Already it's what we call squeaky clean. So nice and dry, no grease, no loose dust or anything on the paint or bare metal itself. And already the metal's looking a lot better and that is treated now. So we can get on with drying the chassis, which we'll put the infrared lamps on now. Leave that going over lunch, for example and then come back to it knowing that things are as dry as possible and then we can go with weld through primer in this location only so we can weld those brackets back in place, those four brackets and then once they're done uh, we've got to weld one exhaust stud up here and then we can start thinking about the paintwork which will be etch primer first. Here's the four brackets that um, are in the exchange program. We've got lots of sets of these now, and these have been blasted so that they're, all the loose corrosion is off. We still have a little bit, um, but they're certainly nothing flaky or loose, and we can get them welded back on and know that the paint is gonna stick to them. And more importantly, the areas behind these brackets, which is the rear axle carrier panel, we've been able to treat that corrosion on the car so nothing's left or trapped for future. So the etch primer is dried and the car is fully masked, protected and ready for our next coat of paint which is high build primer which is going to be black but let's just give you a quick idea of the etch primer which is um, anything on bare metal so battery box area, uh, the reinforcement plate work plus those brackets these are the ones that we blasted and then re-welded back on so remember there was tons of corrosion up there all up here you can see where it's affected the metal grain but it's now nice dry smooth no corrosion to worry about some in the spring perch area um, around the back of the handbrake console carriers these ones are really affected especially in this little bit up here find it everywhere really all in these little little flanges of the rear axle carrier panel on the seat panel there um, on that spring perch as well up in the fuel vent little bracket up here, the tube should I say, on the turret for the shock absorber. There's the right rear reinforcement plate and there's the left rear and it was round on the back of that bracket for the stud. So we've done as much as we can with removing all that loose corrosion and protecting it or treating it with the Pore 15 metal prep and now we're going to move on to high build primer.
I was just getting ready to paint the um, high build primer and on the underside of the battery tray I noticed that one of the grommets was a bit moist and it didn't quite work out because the car has been dry for days and days. Why was it moist around here? So went up in the battery tray, took the battery out, took the battery tray out and found a low level of possibly water. It might have been acid, I doubt it, but it was probably water. So I pushed the grommet through and I'm glad I did because underneath the seam sealer, this wasn't obvious at all, but there is corrosion that had been creeping through because water had been coming through from the battery that side. And also then pushed the secondary one through and I think there could be some corrosion under that seam sealer. So I'm glad I did that because now I can treat that, sort that out and get that into etch primer and then do the everything all in one go. That's the high build primer applied, which is matte black in finish, drying under the infrared lamps. Now we can, well, actually we can't see much because it's gone pretty dark. Now I've turned those lights off, but you get a good idea of the, now the lack of corrosion on this car. Even that second paint coat is squeaky clean. No corrosion, no loose paint, nothing problematic at all. Sorry, it doesn't seem to be focusing very well, this camera and this light, but there we are. Just stand back a little bit and you can see that all of the rear axle counter panel is coated in high build primer. So over the etch primer, which is on the bare metal areas, and the original BMW seam sealer. Um, left front reinforcement plate, seat panel and rear trailing arm area have been done. Right front plate. Right out into the wheel arches, got soft edge, 3M tape on the arches, so we're going to be um, doing a full arch paint as well. And we're going to do a two tone, customers wanting our original E coat sort of finish underneath, um, which is like an olive green, sort of trying to match the original factory colorings. Um, and then the wheel arches are going to be silver grey, which is the body color of this car, paint code A08. Um, Boot floor has been done. There's the battery tray. I should have brought a torch with me, I know. Still see the pitting in the metal, but now it's been treated. Um, that should stop or slow down completely, we hope. There's those two grommets I took out earlier because we found some corrosion and water underneath that seam sealer. Um, so I'm going to stop talking and get on with the sprayable seam sealer next. Well, I've just done the final top coat of colour, we've done the sprayable seam sealer and like I say we're doing a two-tone on this car for this customer so underside is an e-coat colouring or a version of it and the wheel arch is um, silver grey and I just want to get the clear coat reflection on this, it's just been applied so it's likely to dull down uh, once we leave it to dry so it, just after painting I thought I'd show you this shine which I'm really pleased with um, and now I'm going to go and paint the other side and then we'll leave it to dry. So the paint process and seam sealer process is all finished and now everything's dried um, we've come in the next day so we leave them to dry overnight and now we're ready to start the rebuild process or fit any new brake pipes that the car might be having which this one is and do the cavity waxing so I just wanted to quickly show the sort of finish and shine and the fact that everything's totally dry. All our finishes are dry so you can wash them, you can get under your car and clean your arches out. You can use a jet wash or a hose, um, they're very resilient. Remember these areas that were full of corrosion, they're nice and non-corroded, all treated under these layers. So these were brackets that we took off, blasted and then re-welded found a fair amount of corrosion there around the um, seat panel. We've also done a little bit of stitch welding on the front of the rear trailing arm pocket as well where we finish our lines. There's the right front plate. There was some corrosion up here in the spring turret panel and up on the nipples area we call that. These loads of corrosion on this right hand side, inside underneath the bracket, on the brackets, around the backs of the handbrake console carriers where the handbrake cables come through. This is the seat panel, lovely finish if we do say so ourselves. And then looking back at the car, we've got the, air, the central rear part of the rear axle carrier panel and this is the start of the boot floor section. So here's the right rear reinforcement plate with our holes for um, cavity wax in the internal section and these are where we're going to put some new rib studs there because they were corroded. Got rid of all the corrosion around that edge there and into the wheel arch. So we took out the seam sealer and exposed the join, but now we filled it with 
not only two, two layers of paint, but seam stealer and then the color as well. And right up to the corrosion issues that we took out there, all the way up to the edge. So the soft edge masking tape's just starting to come off there. But that is how we contain our panel edge finish. And the corrosion we took out of that fuel vent filler hole. And then we've got our two-tone sort of level finishing off. Here's the underside of the car, which is the battery tray. And here's the last part of the wheel arch liner as it comes down. And then up in this area, we took four spot welds out there, belt sanded them, removed them, and then sorted out with plug welding. And there's the other arch, and this is a full seam welded joint now. Um, welded a new stud on that had come out or broken as it came, the car came in. Uh, it's all very really well, nice finish, really happy with this. A little bit of corrosion there we got rid of as well. And then that horrible corrosion across there, little bits on the uh, grommet hole. So as you see, I took a bit of seam sealer off there and we'll put new grommets in that location. Um, and that is about as much as I can show you because I'm going to start fitting brake pipes next. So I'm just going to be demasking the car, just looking at the boot line and onto the roof. And this is the cover. We put a brand new cover on every single car and trim it, cut it to shape every single time so that there's no risk of any damage to any paintwork or any glass. This is just on the outside and I just thought this is just a nice example to show. This car has only been in the workshop say six days I think and just the general process just leaves this sort of atmospheric fallout which you just cannot get around. That is just the process or the nature of the beast as you'd say. I mean the brown sort of haze is probably like a rust sort of coloured dust because we've been doing a lot of rust corrosion removal on this which is in the atmosphere but then when you actually get closer you can see specks of maybe I don't, I don't think it's grit but I don't know what it is but it's something metallic it may even be metal particles who knows it might even be sort of an overspray of paint on here as well and that is why just one example why we go to such extreme levels and um, to protect the, the vehicles so there's never any damage to any any cars this car's suffering from internal front MIG welds that have broken as well, so I'm just getting ready to do that. This one's a little bit different, and the customer's already stripped the interior for us, which is good, and stored that all at their own property before bringing the car to us. And um, We're quite happy with that, we entertain that sort of thing, um, but then we still need to do a lot of protection, so it'll be um, BMW Body Shop covers, the cardboard section, which is there's four cut to shape cardboard pieces to cover all the glass and the rear headlining. Then we got um, part of the armrest is out and then it's bagged as well and then we've got the weld through plank blanket on there. The doors are bagged, the seats have got seat covers on them and bags as well so that's four layers of protection just for the two seats. Handbrake and the con uh, and the gear stick gator are protected with BMW covers along with the centre rear view mirror. Um, and then just thought I'd just show a little bit more about what we keep or have inside the car. I'm just lining the tools up. That, these are all the tools I'll need just to repair the single front mounts where those 20 mil holes are there. Not taking into consideration anything else for the car. That's just some of the equipment. There's some of the welding equipment there. And then walk you around to the back. And this car is quite unique in the fact that it doesn't have any damages in the rear cavity. So we won't be needing to go in that far. So I've just put some tape on to protect that. So when we've got our leads and our tools working in here, we're not gonna scratch the, the nice finish inside. But these are some of the tools. So it's hot air gun, belt sander drill, spot weld drill, torches, um, multi-tool, tapes, cleaning, paints, leads. That's the amount of stuff that we'll need to bring into the car to work with the front mounts inside the car and i forgot the all important ppe so welding jacket hood gloves uh, breathing mask goggles or glasses face mask and hearing protection as well we've got our access panels cut open in the rear seat panel which gets us through to this cavity this is what we talk about when we say an internal cavity and this is the top of the rear axle carrier panel front mounts these are the mig welds which hold the threaded receiver below here to this cavity cover panel and these are very small mig welds not actually fully penetrated gap there and a gap over there and a gap all the way down that side we've got very early sign of um, a spot well sorry a crack coming out just about there I think um, possibly a little corrosion marker back there we'll see when we clean some of this dirt off on the other side the right hand side We've definitely got thicker welds. It's almost like they knew that this right side 
seems to get the problem uh, more than the other side. So fully penetrated MIG welds all the way across, no gaps. And we've got a definite crack going across that MIG weld there and a line coming down this side. And we might find some more once we've cleaned all this dirt out of there. But at the moment, they are definitely got some issues and we're gonna sort them out and remove them. You can see the issue a bit better now. It's all been cleaned up. I mean, these are really poor welds. Human welds, I'd imagine. Um, there's just no excuse. This is a, an 06 car, last year of production. You really thought after, well, they started building the E46 in 98 and this is an 06 production, May 06. So, that's easily seven full years, if not eight, you could argue, that um, people have been welding these rear axle carry panels at the factory, and this left-hand side is just silly. Compare that to the right-hand side, which is fully penetrated, and yet my argument goes straight out the window because these still crack anyway. This one's got the crack on this MIG weld, going through the MIG weld, and then also down the side of it, and stopping somewhere about here. So now we're going to find out where these cracks stop, centre punch them, and then stop drill them before we actually remove the MIG welds and re-weld them ourselves. So that's one side re-welded, got our MIG welds down there, and I've just got some etch primer and now high build primer drying inside the cavity. I haven't painted this one yet, so you can see the welds, which are thicker, fatter, more penetrating, and they've repaired the cracks. But like I said, they've also got rid of the old MIG welds that you saw we took out earlier. And now we've got uh, what we feel is a more stable connection. So one reinforcement plate, this is the Reedish 005 plate with a very slight bend and a hole for cavity waxing and inspection later on. That's welded on with a few stitches and then the other cavity is painted and that's now dry, ready for the second plate to go on. So for cars that aren't having a full interior paint because they haven't needed the rear cavity in the boot cut open, then we just do localized paint in the front seat section. Um, and this is what we're about to do now. So we've just masked up the sound deadening pad, the original BMW one, which has got, a, that is black normally, but it's got a color coated top coat, I suppose, from when the, the robots spray the car, in this case, silver gray. Um, so we just masked that, that up because we don't want to paint over that. We're going to paint the areas that we've worked on and welded, etch primer, then high build primer, and then a dusting of body colour paint. And then we'll be able to take this um, tape off and it should look fairly original, hopefully. So I've just shaped the BMW genuine brake pipes. Uh, these are the steel coated brake pipes and they come straight and you have to straighten them to pattern. And we've got this special tool as well. So we've got all new clipping points plastic studs, spring clips, backing brackets, the new top brackets, a joiner, uh, joiners all the way through, clean the vent hose and that goes all the way through to the front of the car. So front to rear brake pipes and the over axle one as well. Can't do much about plastics that are just aging and not staying in their right position, but that would probably out how it would have been from factory, nice and parallel. But over the years it wants to do that. Um, yeah, and I just want to show you this is non-tensioned. We haven't got the spring clip or the flexi hose on there yet. So you can see it's totally untensioned. And I just want to show our lineup that is absolutely central. And so no tension, so that's perfect, ready for flexi hoses. And on the right hand side, we've got a non-tensioned one, a tiny bit off, so I'm gonna play with that and just get that a little bit central. And, um, and that is our version of BMW brake pipes to an OEM specification. There we go, a bit of movement, no touching of the chassis, and that is now central with no uh, tension at all. So I've applied the color, which is silver gray, and uh, also now got a clear coat lacquer on there, which you can see in the bottom left corner over here, nice shine. That's still drying, and then once that's dry, we can take the masking tape off and double check everything looks good. So here's the cavity wax process coming out of the flutes of the rear axle carrier panel and the boot floor. This is a natural um, uh, wax exit, I suppose you'd say. And then if you had a car from new factory, you might not have that much wax. We do go over the top, be honest, but you do always get wax lines in this um, little area here. So we'll wait for that to drip off and start setting. And then this customer specifically asked us to remove the wax um, fallout, I suppose you'd call that, 
he'd rather see it completely clean so that's what we'll be doing on this car you still do get a little bit of wax that is soft and when you drive the car can roll about and start to come out but it's extremely slow creep and if you do notice any you can always wipe it off but there um there is the wax section of the rear cavity of the rear axle carry panel that's the first stage of fit up complete so we've got the fuel tank in all the new genuine bmw brake pipes fuel ventilation system expansion tank and carbon canister and pipe works uh, that's about what we call the first stage that's everything we can do cleaning as we go and how we're able to get such good results with no overspray or no obvious paint lines is because we take everything out as you saw in the video before so when we put these components back in it sort of it's very fresh it's a good contrast the black plastics against the painted areas um, now that's all finished fuel and brake pipe systems we can raise the axle back into the car there's the original BMW brake pipes now fitted to their flexi hoses with the spring clips in position as well. Um, normally we'd be heavily wax waxing these brake pipes with a transparent wax all over the unions and over the metal pipes but this car is going to be taken apart again straight when it gets back to the customer because the customer is going to be doing a lot of powder coating, um, a bit of an underside restoration themselves. They just um, instructed us to do the rear axle carrier panel repair and reinforcement and the chassis work with the corrosion um, so all this is going to be taken apart in the next week or so so in this instance we won't be waxing these brake pipes and we'll just be giving instructions to the customer to wax these brake pipes when they do the reinstall themselves so that's the inside works finished and i've put the uh, sound deadening pads back the sections i cut out earlier on that one there 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 and there and you just see the join lines or the cut lines where i took them off and it would have been absolutely perfect apart from when I took the masking tape off of the sound deadening pad up there you can see it took the top layer of the factory silver grey overspray off of the black sound deadening pads which is a shame so from a distance it's not too bad but it's not perfect um, these are black sound deadening pads this one and this one that BMW lay in believe it or not a worker just lays them in that's why they're always in different slightly different areas the parallel lines aren't correct the circles aren't correct they just get laid in and then uh, the car goes through a huge oven where not only the car but also the sand in the pads get extremely warm on the production line and then they actually sink into position there's not a worker or a robot that comes and presses all these down it just happens naturally um, they're black and then it goes off to on the paint line the car gets painted on the outside this case silver grey the robots don't spray the inside of the car silver grey it's just this is all just overspray from the open door and window apertures when the car is being painted on the outside so a black sound ending pad suddenly gets a slight color coated top which this is silver grey overspray from the factory and as you can see that's what's lifted off on the back of the um, masking tape but I'm still okay with this and I've spoken with the customer in the next year or so this car is probably having a weld in roll cage more than likely and that's going to be going through the um, seat panel and boot floor onto the rear subframe pickup mounts in the rear axle carrier panel so there's going to be a lot more welding painting grinding going on in this car soon and that sand in the pads probably gonna to have to come off completely for that roll cage anyway so in this instance we're going to keep it as it is and go along with it but we've got a nice shine on the painted section that we did here's our cover plate 005 readish reinforcement plates um, got the 12 mil grommets back in the location so that's where we've done cavity waxing already and where you can do future borescope camera inspections and the color match isn't that bad either I don't think so silver gray is concentrated there where I've done it myself and then this is the general overspray from the factory finish the rebuilds go in nicely and we're ready to put the exhaust on there is an E46 M3 without the exhaust. Uh, we'll put the whole thing on in one piece and then we'll put the rear bumper on, uh, carry out the brake fluid bleed, the V brace and a few last little under trays for the gearbox area. This car won't be having a wheel alignment um, at the customer's request because obviously it's uh, being stripped down as soon as the car gets home um, then the customer's taking this axle back out so that you can do all the powder coating and all the nice things and um, actually freshen this up um, really well to match the chassis then. The work's now complete on this E46 M3, rebuilt completely. Um, brake fluid's been um, bled through the whole system. And just quickly show you 
Um, see, that's what I was talking about with wax still coming out. We've just driven the car slightly around the car park and it still just keeps on trying to dribble out, but we can wipe that off. That's not a problem. So we've had the Greenish Motorsport E46 rear axle carrier panel repair and reinforcement process, which you've just been watching on this video, including the reinforcement plates and then the extended corrosion treatment process, which involved taking those brackets off, rewelding them, blasting them, and putting them back on. Um, then the extended paint process all the way through to the seat panel, up to the rear trailing arm pocket. Did a little stitch weld on the rear trailing arm pocket as well, because it was showing signs of movement. Um, all over the boot floor section, right up to the rear panel behind this heat shield, including removing that corroded bracket on that battery box. So that's now been treated as well and fully painted and then a full arch paint as well in two-tone color so sort of an OEM finish underneath and body color on the inside which is silver gray and then we've also been doing cavity wax sim in the front sections of the rear axle carrier panel and the rear section as well and the customer supplied us um, BMW genuine uh, metal brake pipes they come straight so we have to shape them to the correct location and they've been done front to rear all the way up to the service joint and along with all the little brackets and the spring clips and the plastic holders and the join systems over there and a few new bolts, subframe bolts and front studs and bolts the customer also supplied. Um, so that's pretty much it, it wasn't a huge job on this one. Like I say, this car is going to be now taken apart when it gets home to the customer because he'd like to do all the powder coating and refreshing himself. He just needed us to do the structural work and the chassis work, corrosion work and the painting work. So now we're going to take it on the road test and then carry out a vehicle wash before we hand over. Time for the snow foam wash obviously has more stages than that but this is just the first stage to let all the contaminants come down and dwell off of the car before we do any washing or touching of the paint. Now we've done a snow foam wash and a rinse off we're just using Iron X which is a product which finds any contamination basically any ferrous metal or um, just atmospheric fallout which is all throughout the world and it just tries to neutralize it and loosen it up which is why you get these purple streaks from and that is then jet washed off and the idea behind that is that before you even touch the paint with any wash bit you can get rid of as much as contaminants as you can so that you're not disturbing or affecting the clear coat in any way when you wash the car. That's the vehicle finished now it's had cleaning sorry about the wind noise outside but um, that's had a few miles road testing no wheel alignment on this vehicle because like we said the car is being taken apart now and going to have an underside restoration on all the axle components but that is what a, um, an 06 with 51,000 miles is, uh, is like at Reach Motorsport having the rear axle carrier panel repair and reinforcement process.